Every year on 12 June and the night before, some Protestants in Northern Ireland light towering bonfires, hold street parties and march through the streets to celebrate an event that took place more than 300 years ago. This event, William of Orange's crushing victory over James II at the Battle of the Boyne in 1690, was to mark a major turning point in Irish and British history and its ramifications are still being felt today. Here are 10 facts about the battle. 1. The battle pitted the forces of Protestant Dutch prince against the army of the post Catholic English king. William of Orange had deposed James II of England and Ireland and 7th of Scotland in a bloodless coup two years before. The Dutchmen had been invited to overthrow James by a prominent English Protestants who were fearful of his promotion of Catholicism in the Protestant majority country. 2. William was James' nephew. Not only that, but he was also James' son-in-law, having married the Catholic king's eldest daughter Mary in November 1677. After James fled England for France in December 1688, Mary, a Protestant, felt torn between her father and her husband, but ultimately felt that William's actions had been necessary. She and William subsequently became co-regents of England, Scotland and Ireland. 3. James saw Ireland as the backdoor through which he could reclaim the English crown. Unlike England, Scotland and Wales, Ireland was overwhelmingly Catholic at that time. In March 1689, James landed in the country with forces supplied by the Catholic King Louis XIV of France. In the months that followed, he fought to establish his authority over all of Ireland, including the Protestant pockets. Eventually, William decided to go to Ireland himself to assert his power, arriving at the port of Carrickfergus on 14 June 1690. 4. William had the support of the Pope This might seem surprising given that the Dutchman was a Protestant fighting a Catholic king. But Pope Alexander VIII was part of so-called Grand Alliance opposed to Louis XIV warning in Europe. And as we have seen, James had the support of Louis. 5. The battle took place across the River Boyne. After arriving in Ireland, William intended to march south to take Dublin, but James had established a line of defense at the river around 30 miles north of Dublin. The fighting took place near the town of Drogheda in eastern modern-day Ireland. 6. William's men had to cross the river, but they had won advantage over James' army. With James' army situated on the Boyne south bank, William's forces had to cross the water with their horses in order to confront them. Working in their favor, however, was the fact that they outnumbered James' army of 23,500 by 12,500. 7. It was the last time that the two crowned kings of England, Scotland and Ireland faced each other on the battlefield. William, as we know, won the face-off and went on to march to Dublin. James, meanwhile, abandoned his army as it was retreating and escaped to France where he lived out the rest of his days in exile. 8. William's victory secured the Protestant ascendancy in Ireland for generations to come. The so-called ascendancy was the domination of politics, the economy and high society in Ireland by minority of elite Protestants between the late 17th century and the early 20th century. These Protestants were all members of churches of Ireland or England, and anyone who wasn't was excluded. 9. The battle has become a key part of the folklore of the Orange Order. The Orange Order was founded in 1795 as a Masonic-style organization committed to maintaining the Protestant ascendancy. Today, the group claims to defend Protestant liberties, but is viewed by critics as sectarian and supremacist. Every year, members of order hold marches in Northern Ireland on or around 12 July to mark William's victory at the Battle of the Boyne. 10. But the battle actually took place on the 11th of July. Although the battle has been commemorated on the 12th July for more than 200 years, it actually took place on the 1st July according to the old Julian calendar and on 11th July according to the Gregorian which replaced the Julian calendar in 1752.